The question of what more can be done to alleviate the workload uh, as this Omicron vir virus variant takes off uh, is very, very important. And so we want to bring in Dr. Aditi Nurakar. She's a physician at Harvard Medical School, is joining us now with her insight. Dr. Nurakar, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Terry. So uh, with these confirmed cases uh, surging, the Omicron variant, exodus of medical staff at some place uh, due to burnout and stress of pandemic, how, how are hospitals coping with the increased pressure? Frankly, Terry, none of the hospitals across the nation are coping very well. We are entering year three of the pandemic, and every year we're seeing an exodus of medical staff physicians, nurses, technical staff, both in the hospital and outpatient in the clinics. So we're really in dire straits. And, you know, many people, particularly during this wave, they were able to bear through the brunt of the Delta wave. But as we hit early into the Omicron wave, we're seeing real fissures in the medical system. And that's worrisome. And Dr. Nurakari, with the FDA's approval of the first pill to treat COVID-19 now, uh, do you think there's going to be a positive impact on the rate of vaccination in the United States? Or, or might it encourage people, well, they've, they, they've got a, a pill, I don't really need to get vaccinated. You got a sense of that? I don't necessarily have a sense of that, Terry. You know, we have 60 million unvaccinated people here in the U.S. and we have behavioral scientists all around the country really figuring out what can we do to help push the 60 million people to get vaccinated. We know that the vaccine mandates have been very effective, but a recent Kaiser Family Foundation survey found that with the Omicron variant, those who are most worried about personally getting infected are actually vaccinated people, not unvaccinated people. So there's a lot here to uncover. And one very, you know, a silver lining and a really reassuring thing about the vaccines in the face of the Omicron variant is that the vaccines work. So we really do need to push that messaging though the pill is a wonderful downstream intervention and could really be a game changer, particularly during this winter surge when we need it most. And if I could just follow up on the COVID pill, on the 19 pill, the COVID-19 pill that Pfizer has, you know, the, the treatment of, of serious, severe COVID is, it seems to me, not, not having done it, but just reading about it and talking to people about it, it seems to me incredibly stressful on the caregivers because it is, it is invasive at times, the disease itself is so ravaging that the psychological and emotional toll on caregivers for treating COVID can be pretty severe. Will a pill help, will this, a pill help that, do you think? Absolutely, Terry. You know, some of the real problems with taking care of COVID patients is that COVID is an illness, especially if you are critically ill with COVID. It takes a very long time to improve. People are on the ventilator for a long time. Oxygen requirements are needed for a prolonged period of time. So it is not a quick recovery. The beauty of this pill, which in early studies, the studies were stopped early because of the efficaciousness of the pill. There's a 90% reduction in hospitalization and death. The pill can be taken at home within the first three days of symptoms, and it is an at-home treatment. So it could do wonders to really thwart that influx of patients that we are expecting during this winter surge, most of whom will likely be unvaccinated. That's amazing. So that, that, that would be a game changer, as you say. Let me turn to government, the federal government. In your opinion, do you think the Biden administration is handling its response to the Omicron variant effectively? I do, to a certain extent. Yesterday's address about the 500 million tests was a wonderful first step, but unfortunately it is not enough. There are 330 million Americans. The administration has promised 500 million tests to start being distributed in January. But we need those tests now because we need to make sure that we have ample supply for those 330 million Americans to test on a regular basis. At this current time, with the rate of deployment of these 500 million tests, there aren't even two tests to go around. And so therefore, it is a little too late for all of this to really work to help mitigate and slow the spread of Omicron for this winter. at testing sites across the country. But let me ask you a broader question, cultural question about the Omicron variant. Because it is so transmissible, because it, it does seem like there, it's hard to get out of its way, 
Do you think that terrible division, cultural division that we've had in this country between people who will take the shot, won't, vaccination, not vaccination, credit the uh, public health officials, disbelieve the public health officials, do you think in a way the, the wild transmissibility of this variant might help uh, calm that a little bit? We all need to get out of its way, and the vaccine is the, is the best way to do it, or are we just stuck in this rut, do you think? You know, it's interesting, Terry, because initially at the start of the pandemic, our goal was zero COVID eventually. As we moved through year one and year two with the Delta variant and the advent of it here in the U.S., we realized very quickly that zero COVID couldn't be a goal, but that it was important to mitigate hospitalization and death and really prevent that. And we are still very much thinking about mitigating those serious metrics, severe illness, hospitalization, and death. We also were thinking very much about minimizing cases. However, with the Omicron variant, like you said, 70 times more transmissible than Delta, a two-day doubling time. It is more contagious than measles. It is unlikely that we will prevent the spread of cases because it is so rampant, so highly transmissible. But the hope is that with vaccination, boosting, masks, good ventilation, and really crowd management, that we can somehow slow the spread and prevent those who are at higher risk of getting infected and therefore prevent those serious metrics, hospitalizations and death by pulling together something we're struggling with these days, but maybe we can get through that together. Dr. Aditi Nurakar, thanks very much for being with us. Thanks, Terry. It was a pleasure. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.